Hello everyone and welcome back to the Inductive Podcast. I'm here with... My name is Nicholas Deskins and I'm glad to be here. And I'm Inductive Gaming as y'all may know because I run this bitch. Um, today we have some interesting work tales for you guys. Um, this is my second day back. Um, we decided to reminisce a little bit. Uh, last week we promised you... Funny Grant stories. Um, so let's let's start start in on that. Uh, I'll note that I've been working a little bit longer than inductive gaming. Um, you want to start? Why don't you start? Because it's like in chronological order. Uh, there's no way I'll be able to remember in chronological order. Oh, I know that. I, I think the worst time I had is um as a bagger one time i had to clean up the single worst dump <laughs> taken in the 2000s 2000s i promise you that to be the truth let me describe the events of what happened using my investigative skills this is why i composed the scene to be Someone walks into the bathroom. They sit down. They take a dinosaur dump, okay? And the dump is so large, so runny, it clogs the toilet. They try to wipe, not with toilet paper. The option was there. They just choose not to. But with the brown like paper towels you wash your hands with, while that was even in the stall, I don't know. He probably went up and got it, which is an even worse image. So that didn't help, all right. And then half of it, instead of being put in the toilet, was thrown in the floor because he probably realized, hey, this is actually going to clog the toilet. So it's on the seat, it's on the back of the toilet, it's clogged, it's in the floor, and. It's the credit still credit. This guy tries to clean up the mess. Okay, he fails, and then pukes everywhere. So I have a lasagna of defecation, failed wiping attempts, and puke, and just left for me. Which stall was it? The first one in the men's room. The first one. Yes. I would expect that from the last one. I will. That's rough. Well, that was tough. One of my favorite. So, see, yeah, craft stories isn't really that great. Um, the only other notable one is that once upon a time there, um, I think I think she's dead now. Not entirely for sure. <sighs> That's rough. Uh, but we had this retarded lady that would come in. And I use the word retarded appropriately. I mean, she was actually mentally handicapped. Um. But she would come in every day of her life, go to a random spot on the floor, drop her diaper, crap in the floor, and just leave. Uh, and we knew when she could come in, too. I mean, she came in, and we're like, oh, no, 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 not this again. In the floor? In the floor. In the floor, in the middle of the aisles. Yeah, yeah. And you guys didn't. It's like she walks in, we go and start running a bucket. <laughs> Because we knew what was going to happen. No, like, and we no. can't just tell her to leave because you know she's she's retarded and it would look bad. Defecation <laughs> on the floor. No, no. The fun story is kind of when we uh, talk about rude customers. Yeah. Or not not necessarily rude customers. Sometimes stupid customers, interesting customers. Um, there are very few of those. Very, very. No, I don't know. Um, well, it depends on your definition of interesting. No, that's that's fair. Uh, one of my favorite interesting customer stories. I had this. It was a slow day. I mean, it was an unreasonably slow day. Like probably the slowest I've ever seen it. I was standing at register two. Uh. No one was on register one. No one was on register three. 
In fact, no one was even in line. Okay. Um, this girl comes with a basket full of stuff, like with a shopping baskets, and she, uh, she goes down register one. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, no one's on register one. I can get you over here on two, though. She looks at me and goes, okay. And backs up. She didn't turn around while she, like, backs up. And then comes to register three. Then goes to the express lane with the office. Unloads all of her stuff. And we always have someone at express. Before they can get to her, she puts the stuff back in. Goes back to register one. Looks at me and goes, oh, okay. And then comes to register two and proceeds to check out like normal. I don't think she heard you. No, she heard me. I think she was on drugs. <laughs> yeah, we get those. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's Southwest Virginia. Um, In the dead center of crack town. I don't know if... I don't know for sure if we have customers on drugs. <gasps> yeah, that's even rare. The only, the only worst thing I've had to clean up was a filled diaper in the women's bathroom. Um, we have a particular office worker, but, uh, she comes, I remember the day she first started at Grant's, um, it was me and we has uh, another dude who don't work there anymore, um, but she goes, yeah, I gotta use the bathroom, I'll be right back, I swear she, she did this, I can't prove it was her, but I know it was her. Because on the, on the way back, she was like, yeah, a uh, women's bathroom needs to be cleaned. So, I mean, if you have any benefit of doubt, she could have found it like that. Or she could have done it. Um, but we go, and like, there was not an attempt for this to go into the toilet. It started on the floor, it went up, some of it went in the toilet, then went through the, the wall like a stripe. <laughs> How the fuck? Well, I, I, like, they didn't sit on the toilet. They just squatted, power aim, went, <laughs> and it all came out at once. Uh, good stuff. How the fuck? How the how the fuck do you manage that? Talent. I don't know if you have to have talent or if you have to suck a life, but one of the two. Alright, the loyalty. You want to take a few turns? No, I mean. Uh. <laughs> Blunt. No. Good job, Mr. Podcast. No, I said, well, I mean. I didn't say no. I said, well, I mean. I guess one time I was doing a safety sweep and this customer stopped me from the safety sweep to literally talk about butter for fucking 10 minutes. That's fair. Butter. Specifically a product that we guess we didn't carry anymore. Hmm. Most uh, most of my stories come from my shitty co-workers. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, we have, I have a crappy co-worker. She's gone now, thank heavens. But uh, during the Super Bowl weekend... <laughs> I think it was last year. Um, I asked if I could open the store that morning. That way, um, I could get off, go home, and you know, watch the game. And she goes, "Ah, no, actually, we're just going to go to you during the Super Bowl because f you." Um, that was a what? Uh, one, one, one great coworker story. Um, we have this dude. He was a cross train batter cashier he quit he came back he was working with with us uh he didn't last very long because most of the time when people come back they just don't but they uh the office people needed one of our managers and so they you know put him on the all call system so I tell her to the front he comes and does whatever he needs to do he leaves and the Another person in the office had not realized he'd come. He's like, where is this guy at? 
someone call him again. And so this guy gets a look on his face, like he get this big grin, like his eyes kind of like did the like Jim Carrey evil thing, you know what I'm talking about? And he drives and goes, Tyler to the front immediately. He gets here and he's like, What? <laughs> He's like, oh, I didn't realize you already come. Sorry to waste your time. There was no point in people. There's no point in it now. And that's how to piss someone off. Well, he stays mad, so it's all good. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Alright, so, so I realized that these grand stories may not have been as funny as we thought they were in our minds. No, we're not done. Oh, You're not. Oh, what do you got? I'm not. Um. So, listen. This is this is advice to people. Don't leave your fucking kids unattended in a goddamn grocery store. That's fair. That's fair. And don't send them in the grocery store at eight thirty in the night to buy booze. To, <laughs> to buy a loaf of bread. By themselves, if they don't have, if they're both their ages, don't add up to double digits. They come in, they immediately knock off a Christmas ornament and breaks. Good. So us, and and you know that Christmas foam, that that crap that looks like snow, that's a bitch to sweep up. Oh, I can imagine. So I'm, me and me and another coworker, the best coworker of our. The legend himself. He, we would have got out of there at nine ten, maybe, but because some fucking terrible parental figure let, <laughs> let their let their fucking kids come in the store, knock over a Christmas ornament. I spent a good five to ten minutes cleaning it up because it was a bitch to get that powder stuff. I want to explain the most offensive term in grants. Oh, okay, that's fair. Um, not not in grants. I'm just in the English language. It's a uh, it's a universal fact that the most offensive combination of words is not you know a rape joke or it's not sexist. It's not racist. It's not the nine eleven propaganda. It's nothing like that. The most offensive combination words in the English language is can I see your ID we should just like I, I feel like recording like all the times that we've asked people to see their ID and they just get all upset and triggered yeah, that would make can, a funny video I can almost understand like older guys getting upset by it I get weirded out by these old women that was like I was like oh I feel flattered it's like please don't that's fair please don't uh, what I don't understand is when young people get mad it's like no I'm not selling it to you then <laughs> what do you mean oh, oh what about what about that kid that blurted out the one that you had to like yeah yeah I was this kid come in with his mom his mom why was his dad? His, both his parents are there, I mean, mm. to be fair. His, his mom comes in with this kid and is buying um, Skull, which is tobacco product. He's got to be 18 to buy it. And he, uh, I go to the, uh, to the back, we keep it in the, you know, it's kind of the, uh, the side wall that's guarded by some railings that way, you know, because uh, that's a popular theft object. So, I'm like, so you want it to go natural, if I go on, and the kid goes natural. So, I get back over there, I scan the item, I ask the kid for his ID, and the mom's like, Well, I'm buying it. It's like, Yeah, but I know it's for him. <laughs> anyway, so we didn't sell that. He didn't sell this tobacco to him. He could have kept his mouth shut. I mean, probably. But hey. So let's make a, let's make a transition. So I think I think this is gonna be a little bit better. 
Hmm. Um, fun grand stories. Nah, okay. Fun Dungeons and Dragons stories, though. Not probably any of my viewers probably know what the fuck that is. Me neither. Uh, no, Dungeons and Dragons, really fun game. It's a fantasy game. Um, created by, uh, I think it's Gary Galax and like that. In the uh, late seventies, early eighties, through there, um, kind of a nerd game, but I mean, it's 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 making a comeback. It's getting popular right now. That's that's the beauty of it. Uh, the history of Dungeons and Dragons that it's evolved a lot. It's went from you know a first edition to a second edition to a third edition to a three point five edition to a fourth edition to now we're on a fifth edition. Uh, so a lot of people argue the fifth edition is the best. Some people are still arguing three point five. But it's, uh, it's just really funny. It's a game involving dice, luck, and imagination. That's all you have to have. Um, I don't have either of those things. Uh, you have dice? Do you have dice? No. Oh, right. I was talking about luck and imagination. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> don't mention I'm an elf. <laughs> let's start with that, I guess. Yeah, let's start with that. We ran a campaign. I was, um... In, in Dungeons & Dragons, you have... A handful of players and you have a DM and that stands for Dungeon Master. He's the person who kind of officiates the game, makes sure the, the rules are followed or to the best of his ability and everything just runs kind of the way it's supposed to. That way people don't, you know, corrupt the um, system of it. It's not competitive, it's just there's not a winner or a loser. Um, We're all losers in that. Well, yeah, well, yeah. It's, uh, uh, there, there's no winners anyway. Um... <laughs> But throughout the uh, campaign, um, this dude plays an, an elf bard, and just throughout the entire campaign, he's just like, "Don't mention I'm an elf to everyone." See, the joke was my what was it? Persuasion or like deception was a modifier for it. I have no idea. I think it was. I think it was persuasion, so that people would believe me. But now my deception's just god tier. I'll never fail at a deception check unless I roll a one. I mean, I don't know, but thirty-seven. One of the uh, funnest times I had playing was I was. It's it's the sorry Sean origin, okay. So we got this dude named Sean, and uh, there's a party of there's, there's a lot. This is at a college, and I can't remember. There's like seven to ten people in this group, but they're climbing up this mountain, and their their tank has got everyone tied up because it's really steep. And so everyone's like, and he just he gets randomly goes, you know. I feel kind of weighed down. I think I'm going to get rid of something heavy. I want to uh, turn and throw Sean's sword away. And Sean's like, no! <laughs> yeah, obviously. So they roll against each other to see who wins in this. And the, the guy wins. So he throws Sean's sword away. And so the rest of the entire game, the entire campaign, um, Sean does nothing productive except try to get his sword back and throughout the entire campaign more misfortune just keeps happening with this sword like it gets lost to an abyss eventually it eventually becomes cursed to where if any player rolled a one at any point if they touch it they automatically die okay I feel like that that item should remain in any D and D campaign, as an available item to obtain. I mean, that's up to up to DM's discretion, but I'm sure. Uh, that actually, the sword is actually what killed the final boss too. Did the boss roll a one? Well, I mean, what, what ended up happening at some point in the time, yeah. But what ended up happening is the only person who could wield the sword in the party was the the tank from earlier. Believe it or not. And he was fighting this boss. Uh, the boss was uh, a princess they've been escorting throughout the entire campaign. 
whom every time anyone levels up, she levels up with them. Oof. So it was guaranteed to be much stronger than everyone. Uh, but he rolls a one, surrendering control of his weapon, and then she picks it up and then automatically kills her. So he actually won the game by winning by, by rolling a one. Uh, fall the ball, disgusting, stupid. Uh, this one time, um, it's almost like how I drew the uh, temple that you. Which one? Where we had these like tiles on the wall, that whole pyramid. Oh, okay. How'd you do it? Well, you, you said yourself. Uh, you had different like ways of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's 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 part of the fun of it. There's not a set particular way you can. Yeah, but I I every single trial, I just solved in a. And then, like, a ridiculous... Original thing. manner, was what we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is also ridiculous. This one time I was playing at the college, and uh, this guy uses oils and nature knowledge to rape a tree. That sounds like the most <laughs> trash <laughs> character. Yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna make some oils. Uh, so he, he has these oils and he uses his nature and he rapes a tree and what ends up happening is the tree bears fruits. He rapes a tree. He rapes a tree. The tree bears fruits with his face on them. Now what his goal is he's going to let these fruits grow and then he's going to come back and pick them for companions. And their defense mechanism because they're only fruits to stay alive is they look like normal fruits until you get like right up on them. And then they uh, make this face at you and scare everyone away. <laughs> okay, when we and they're not gonna they're not gonna see your facial expression. They're just gonna hear a fucking nah, raped pig. Nah, but that, that, was the, that was the noise. But the the, the the facial expression is just the, the only face you can make while doing that. You try making that noise of any other facial expression. Go ahead, try it, try it, try it at home. Do it, do it. I can't even. Listen, listen, listen. You, you guys, you guys. I, I can't. No, not, not you. The people listening. Just, just try that noise. Try that noise really loud. That facial expression, okay? <laughs> That's fair. Um, I feel like I have all kinds of these stories. Just trying to figure out which ones are good, which ones people want to hear. Great. Never. Um. How much time we got? We have. It's only twenty three minutes. No, so it's gonna be a short one anyway. Yeah, there's no way we could have fit no, into no, an hour. It's not slight and try it. Um, Brandon. Whoa, 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 whoa! About the Grant story, I forgot to tell. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so there we we uh, I come. I didn't work this day. I stopped by to chat around with a few co-workers and apparently there was a woman that took some hot dog buns oh god <laughs> wieners and they went to the bathroom and it was just covered in blood so god forbid knows what happened uh yeah I, don't... I know what happened that strawberry waterfall felt the need to um get some relief <laughs> why the fuck why the bun <laughs> I can understand the wiener, but why the bun? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. People can be so nasty. You ain't got your red wings, Brandon. What? You ain't got your wet red wings. What is that? You don't know what your red wings are, man. No. So your red wings you get after you um eat a girl out while she's on her period. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. You ain't got your red wings yet? Mm. No, that's either you do, you don't. I guess not. Uh -huh, okay, well, you gotta work on that. I gotta work <laughs> on that. There's a couple of problems with that. Like what? I'd rather not. Like talk. what? I'd rather not talk about it on a podcast. Yeah, you would. 
listen, there was already a podcast dedicated to the reason why. What the hell was I about to this one? <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, Brandon, I gotta ask you something. Yes, sir. What do you think of Grant? <laughs> of this gender neutral Santa Claus? Yeah, that's right. We're doing it. <laughs> There's a what? Gender neutral Santa Claus. Have you seen this? No. Okay, so. Apparently. A lot of people... Actually, I found this out from my, our main boss. He, he walks up to me. He goes, what do you think about this Santa Claus thing? I was like, what Santa Claus thing? He goes, yeah, apparently like 26, 27% of the people think that Santa Claus should be gender neutral or female to, you know, kind of conform to this PC society that we live in. They just... Did they just say fuck Miss Claus? I mean... <sighs> Maybe in one way or another. Hood rats. Hood rats. <laughs> no, what, what, what do you think about that, bro? That's your opinion. We already have a, a female Santa Claus. Do we? Yeah. It's not Santa Claus, but it's Mrs. Claus. I mean, she's not really Santa Claus, though. She's just kind of Santa Claus' wife. Okay, um... So when a person <laughs> is based off of someone, St. Nick, right? St. Nicholas, yeah. St. Nicholas. How the fuck could it be... How the fuck could it be genderless if it's got a set gender already? If it's based off someone that actually existed? Okay, so the, the fun, fun little backstory. Um, if you don't know who St. Nicholas was... He lived in about the 7th century. Um, he was... Uh, back when women didn't have rights. Well, back when women... But he fought for women's rights, kind of. Um, he was known for um, putting coins and different uh, trinkets into the shoes of poor women and women in a abusive relationship so they can you know, leave. Um, he was also known for you know fighting for the church and stuff. He was best known for punching um, a guy in the face because of heresy he, he committed. This guy committed heresy, so St. Nicholas decided just to punch him. Um, yeah, good guy. But uh, the gender-neutral Santa Claus. Actually, I've I seen where this came from. and This this came from um, WCYB. Leave it to them. Leave it to them. I got This is, this is where I'm getting my source from, okay? Especially leave it to them. Yeah, especially this. I'm going to get my sports from WCLB. Is this, there was this ad campaign. Um, they were selling some product. I don't know or care what the product was. There, there was this ad. And they ran a poll to make this commercial. Um, and it was like, how would we transform Santa Claus to make them, to make him more of a 21st century young kind of fit in with this crowd person and they had options they were making female make them have tattoos make them a skateboarder make them go on a diet those were your choices and 26 percent of the people chose female which is a fair because that was just one of the four choices and that was not a bad choice when you compare them to the rest of them they took that all these news sources took that and they said, oh, well, 26% of the people are trying to make Santa Claus female or gender neutral. Outrage on this because this is this is bullcrap. They're trying to change you know, our heritage, blah, blah, blah. No, no, listen, listen, right? So people don't know about you, the ad stuff. They just want to focus on... You get this busty, skinny-clad, fucking barely in her 20s woman as Santa Claus... But if you have this old, decrepit, got a dick and a pussy, <laughs> <laughs> fat, but skinny, like, it's fat, but when you get to, like, the legs, they're, like, so skinny, you wonder how they're supported. See, that's, that's, there's a problem there. Are they? I mean, if you're into that. 
Well, I mean, the the female Santa Claus thing, I mean, it was, I don't think that they intended to make it a big deal. But they made it a big deal. But they deal. made it a big deal because all these people, like, um. Offended. Well, not necessarily offended. They just, they found a way to make people offended by it. They found a way to, well, if you're, if you're writing articles and you're, you're struggling, there's not a big current event going on and. You look at this and you say, hey, I could tick a lot of people off by saying that people want, and they're not wrong, 26% of the people, and it was people between 18 and 25 who were only people who participated in this poll, did want the gender neutral Santa Claus. They just left out the part that there were only four or five options. They left out the part that they asked people, hey, what do you think about this? It wasn't like there was a group of people pushing for it. It's not like we actually want to see female Santas in the mall. I'm not saying that it would be wrong to see a female Santa in the mall. I'm just saying that wasn't the case. People made a big deal out of this, just like they make a big deal out of everything. And then this leads to that, and the truth got distorted. Parents are going to have a fun time describing that to their new millennial <laughs> age children. No, oh, that leaves it yeah. to us. Oh, uh, that's, that's us, buddy. Oh, uh, uh. see, Santa Claus is well, it's whatever you want it to be. Santa Claus is that guy who Do probably you... touched your junk first at the mall. <laughs> Do you want Santa Claus to be the person who took your virginity, or do you want Santa Claus that makes you want to lose your virginity? Yeah, baby, it's cold outside. That song just kept fucking playing. Yeah, uh, there's a radio station that around here that played it on repeat for 12 hours. That's rough. That's tough. It's cold Some rough outside. Stuff. And on that note, we are going to wrap up this podcast. Thank you all so much We're for going to in. wrap it up, put some glitter on it, maybe a bow, and put it underneath the holiday tree. And get fired for it. And get fired for it. <laughs> 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 well, as soon as corporate hears this, they're like, yeah, they're done. They're done, they're done with our shit, especially with my Secret Santa gift. That's always a What's your Secret Santa gift? It's just a Taco Bell gift card, but that's not the that's not what makes it want to get. What makes it? <laughs> what makes it? It's the boxing. So what's the boxing? The fucking dildo box. She's gonna shake it, and <laughs> it's gonna sound like something. Let's see. My my um secret Santa gift is much more interesting. It's a Make America Great Again hat. Let me explain to you why that's funny. Oh, it's because of who it's for. No, it's because of who I am. I'm a 22-year-old, proud millennial, Green Party, left-wing supporting, fidget spinner, beanie-wearing hipster with a Make America Great Again hat. There's so much wrong with (laughs) that. There's so much irony. (laughs) All right, I will see you guys in the next episode. K. K.